Crack pipes for everyone. That is the topic of tonight's byline. The city that brought you the ban on doorknobs for health reasons that leads the push to curb your salt use just for your health. We're there now printing you crack pipes in vending machines. The machines apparently went up months ago, but people didn't notice other than the addicts who were popping in a quarter at a time to buy a new pipe. According to Kaylin C., she and the rest of the folks at the Portland Hotel Society wanted to end the violence that was often seen by people trying to acquire a new crack pipe. Quote, this machine decreases the street value of a pipe. There was a time when pipes were scarce and there was a lot of violence around acquiring a pipe, so we decided to saturate the market. And saturate it they have. A couple of years ago, Vancouver Coastal Health, a partner of the Insight Heroin Injection Project and the people at the Portland Hotel Society, well, they gave away 60,000 crack pipes. Now they have vending machines with 200 pipes apiece. Are they busy? Apparently because the group says the machines need to be restocked every five days. Am I the only one who thinks this is crazy? Mark Townsend, the man who runs the Portland Hotel Society, says those of us that oppose giving away crack pipes or making them really cheap and providing heroin injection sites, well, it's our problem. We just don't understand. So these initiatives save lives, they save money, and they keep people alive for another day to get to detox and treatment. Hey, Mark, here's an idea. Put more resources into getting people treatment and less into aiding and abetting an addiction. Because that's what the Portland Hotel Society is doing. They are aiding and abetting addiction. Every time I speak out against this sort of thing, I'm accused of wanting addicts to die. No, that's not the case. I want people to get treatment. Townsend said he does as well, but his organization spends an awful lot of time and effort and money on trying to change Canada's drug laws, on making drugs more available, on making it easier for addicts to get high. Imagine what they could do if they put all that time and money into treatment instead of court cases that run up to the Supreme Court or legal challenges that go after places that don't want crack pipes. Treatment, not assistance in getting high, that's what addicts need. The whole world was talking about Philip Seymour Hoffman last week. What a tragedy it is that he's gone, he's dead due to a heroin overdose. But then we don't bat an eye when the courts say we need to allow and fund programs so that a poor sap in Vancouver we can keep him getting addicted by giving him a place to shoot up or a place to get his crack pipe easily. I don't understand that, nor do I understand the media that's outraged that Toronto Mayor Rob Ford admitted to doing crack and continues to push for his removal from office, but then gives kid glove treatment to a crack pipe vending machine story. Check out the Globe and Mail headline. Canada's national newspaper, as they like to call themselves, is in full support of these vending machines. And they're completely opposed to Rob Ford. Now, I say Ford and the people being peddled these pipes in Vancouver's downtown east side all need the same thing. They need help in kicking their habits. But what do I know? I'm not an expert. I'm not a medical doctor or a medical professional like the folks at Vancouver Coastal Health, the people who back the distribution of crack pipes while calling for e-cigarettes, the ones that emit only water vapors. Well, they want them banned. They want to limit any exposure to smoking or tobacco, but they back crack pipes pipe vending machines. This same group tells us that sugar is bad for us, but they back crack pipes. This is craziness. None of it makes sense to me, no matter how many so-called experts tell me it's a good idea. The same experts that helped push this ban on cigarette vending machines, do you remember those? Well, now they want crack pipe vending machines. We might all agree that smoking is bad for you, but I think we can all agree that crack is worse. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of my tax dollars being used to push for easier access to drugs and drug paraphernalia. I say we need more common sense in the world, but as the old saying goes, the problem with common sense is it isn't too common. So let's just call for sanity and agree that crack pipe vending machines are a bad idea. And that's the byline. Each place has to do the thing they need to do. The bottom line here is you need to distribute these supplies to addicts to reduce the spread of HIV and AIDS. That's the key thing. I'm not sure that's the key thing at all. David Berner is the executive director of the Drug Prevention Network of Canada. He helped open the first residential treatment center in 1967. Joins us now from Vancouver. David, uh, your thoughts quickly on these uh, crack pipe vending machines. Good, bad or indifferent? 
Well, Mr. Townsend and his young protege, Ms. C, are both lying, quite frankly. They have a public mantra. They like to say that this is the first step on the way to treatment. But let me assure you and your audience, Brian, that I know every treatment agency in the province and most of them in the country, and I've never heard one recovery agency tell me that they've ever had one referral from Insight or from Mr. Townsend. They don't send people to treatment. They don't send people to recovery, and I'll tell you why. Because they have an unstated belief system that you and I probably don't share, and it's one that 99% of all Canadians don't share. And by the way, the federal government doesn't share. And the belief system of Mr. Townsend and his friends goes like this. According to God-given and charter-given rights, drug addicts and alcoholics have the right to consume whatever they want, whenever they want, wherever they want, and we not only shouldn't get in their way, we should help them. In my opinion, these people are flat, crazy nuts. They're destructive. They are harming families. We have a premier here who said, you know, today is family day in British Columbia. What are we doing about families? Giving out free paraphernalia to continue the madness? Uh, look, there's 162 different ways to deal with HIV. Mr. Townsend likes to say that every time he gives out a 25 cent crack pipe uh, uh, kit, He's saving $1.5 million in an HIV case. Let, that, let, let me, that's such bad mathematics. Let, let me get to the, uh, his quote on that because he told our cameras that that is what this is all about. Check it out. Unfortunately, they seem to be stuck in a little bit like where if, there's, if you're distributing condoms, you can encourage everyone to have sex. It's like, you know, we're going to end up like Putin's Russia. If we don't give out crack pipes, are we like Putin's Russia, David? Uh, no, we can stop giving out crack pipes. Look, this is part of a continuum of, of what uh, the harm reductionists do, mostly in B.C., but all around the world. We give free heroin, we give free methadone, we give free Suboxone, we give free alcohol to chronic drunks, we give a free place to go and shoot up safely, whatever that means, and now we give out 94,000 free crack pipe kits. And the day that they ran out of that, Vancouver Coastal Health, who has trouble funding seniors and children for their medications for legitimate diseases, wanted more money to give out more free crack pipe kits. Uh, it's pure insanity. It's destructive. I, I, Look, I really don't get Vancouver Coastal Health because they're out there saying, don't have this, it's bad for you. Don't have that, it's bad for you. And they are fully backing this. They work with the Portland Hotel Society on these kinds of initiatives. Well, watch the Portland Hotel Society very closely over the next 24 months because they may not be around for too long. Uh, these people uh, own something like $60 million worth of real estate, and it's all on your money. It's all on your tax dollars, and they're, they're playing pretty fast and loose uh, with their so-called responsibilities. I don't know that any of them has ever demonstrated the ability to run a business, uh, let alone a popsicle stand or, or, or a dispensing machine, but they have millions of dollars in tax money, and it's all about... You have the right to shoot heroin, you have the right to be a prostitute, you have the right to use cocaine, and nobody should say any different. And I'm sorry, but most of us do say different. We say that, you know, we don't believe in people using these things and we'd like to help them stop. And if they don't want to stop, we're losing interest in them. Let them do whatever they do. But there are consequences. If you want to ask, are there consequences to drug use? There's three simple words, and you mentioned them in your opening. Philip Seymour Hoffman. You can be the greatest actor of your generation and die in your bathroom at the age of 46. That's a consequence of using heroin. I, I want to read off uh, Minister Blaney's comment and then get a very quick reaction. He said, we disagree with the promoters of this initiative. Drug use damages the health of individuals and the safety of our communities. We believe law enforcement should enforce the law. This government supports treatment that ends drug use, including limited access to drug paraphernalia by young people. Uh, Portland Hotel says, no, no, there's no support from this government for drug use. Uh, where's the truth? 
The truth is simple. Mr. Blaney is absolutely correct. Mr. Harper has been on the same uh, 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 bandwagon for years. The former health minister, Tony Clement, was on the same bandwagon. And what do they get from the Townsends of the world? They are vilified. They're called names. They're called Nazis. Uh, they're, we're told that these are evil people. Well, he putinized these people today, didn't he? In your he quote. We, yeah, he putinized them. So that's just that's just ugly, uh, horrible, uh, bad PR. Uh, the minister is absolutely correct. 99% of all, look, I've been a radio talk show host for years. I can tell you that 99% of all the callers I've ever talked to say, we hate this crap. It's a complete, not only a waste of money, it's an evil in our midst. And I am telling you that there is a, a movement that is changing the landscape. And well, in the next hopefully few that year, Hopefully that uh, continues. David, we got to cut it there. We're over time, but uh, we'll chat again soon. Thanks so much. Thank you.